This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to the Living Review weekly webinar series. This is week one, uh, we'll look through interface navigation profiles and customization. Um, my name is Alex Butcher, I'm a sales and technical consultant at Advanced Visual Technologies. So we've been a Blue Beam Platinum partner for the last 15 or so years. Um, so yeah, I hope you look forward to today. Uh, we're going to be running these every week, so tune in uh, probably the next 10 weeks or so. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Um, and also, if you have any suggestions of topics you want to do as well, as well, feel free to send me an email um, and we'll see if we can work them in. So just before we get started, a bit of an introduction to us. So uh, we're a software, hardware and professional services company. Um, we're a reseller of Bluebeam, Autodesk, FM Systems, Dropbox, Beam Software and GoFMX. Um, hardware resellers for Dell, HP and Lenovo. Uh, we also have an in-house drafting team, um, it's the CAD West Bureau. Uh, we do drafting, professional services and software support as well. So if you ever need help uh, with Bluebeam software as well, you can reach out to us at any time. Um, myself, Alex at advancedspatial.com.au. Give us a call on 1300 672 uh, you can also in, inside review you'll find quite a lot of help so under the help menu and help uh, there's a detailed breakdown which we'll show you in a minute as well actually in the software and then also help and launch review tutorials where you can find a lot of other help as well. So today um, we're going to go through interface navigation profiles and customizing things so it's going to include going through the help menu what's available in there um, preferences, things you can change in there to help you out a little bit, um, what all the menu bar, toolbars and everything are called, panel, panel access, um, how you can navigate a PDF and how the mouse works in different modes, um, profiles, customising the interface and profile management and then also go through the file access tab as well and how that works. All right, so let's get into it. So going to Bluebeam now. Um, the interface is quite simple. So this is what you should see pretty much by default um, when you open up Bluebeam. So uh, up the top, we've got uh, the menu bar. So up here, if you go to review and then preferences, um, there's a couple of things you can change in here to make your life easier. Under tools and markup, if you turn on reuse tools and also auto size text box and call out markups, uh, both of those by default won't come turned on. Uh, what they mean is uh, reuse tools, instead of like, after you use a tool, it deactivating, it continues to be activated until you uh, press escape to exit the tool, um, rather than having to go back and click the tool again. Auto size text box and call out markups. Uh, what that will do is auto size the text box after you've typed your text to what the size of the text is, so that you don't have to edit it and it doesn't take up too much space on the document. Um, other than that, in the advanced settings, um, if you're finding sometimes it's a little bit slow, um, it could be to do with uh, the rendering engine and rendering mode. By default, they'll go to hardware and iterative draw. Um, if you don't have a built-in graphics card, it can be better to either go to the software rendering engine or legacy GDI one, and then change to wait for completion as well. And you should see an improvement in how fast it renders and pans around documents. Also under review and about, in here you can check what version you're using um, and uh, what edition as well. So um, I'm using Review Extreme 2019.1.16 latest update. Um, so yeah, if you're not on 2019, it's certainly a good idea to upgrade to it. Um, it's a lot faster, it's a few improved tools and stuff like that as well. So going across to the help menu now, under here is where you can find any support you need inside the software. So if you go to help, it will bring up uh, the online help menu, which has detailed breakdown of every single tool that's available inside Bluebeam. Um, it breaks it down into different workflows and, and different things you can do. Um, detailed breakdown of Studio and how you can use that. 
Um, so yeah, if you're not sure how to use a tool or want to know what tools are available, have a look in here as well and you'll find them. Um, also under the help menu, there is the launch review tutorials, which will bring up this window, uh, which has a few different workflows of, of things you can do in Bluebeam. Hit next and it brings up a short video. You can open up a sample floor plan and work alongside the video with the floor plan as well. And if, if you forget how to do anything or you're not sure how to do something, it's a really good way to learn. And the last thing that I want to show you in the help menu um, is keyboard shortcuts guide. So if you're a keyboard shortcuts kind of person, this is quite helpful. So there's a keyboard shortcut for the majority of the tools that are built into here. Um, can be customised as well under reviewing keyboard shortcuts. Um, but what it can be good to do is, is the tools you use regularly to learn the shortcuts for them. So you're not having to go back and find them all the time. You can just press a shortcut and access them a lot quicker. Um, it'd be impossible to remember every single one, but uh, the, the ones you use regularly are quite helpful to learn. Cool, so games get into space. So the way it's set up, uh, on the left hand side, we've got the panel access bar with all of the different panels. Uh, at the top, we have the menu bar, as you said, and then on the right hand side, we have our toolbars. Um, all of this is customizable, so we can turn on and off um, different tabs that we don't need, for example. Um, the idea is to turn off everything that you don't use regularly um, and just keep on the things that you need. You can also click and drag these around, you can detach them if you want to. Um, or you can put them on the right hand side um, if you prefer the older way that it looked before 2018 was released. Um, you can put some on the right hand side as well. Um, I tend to just put the properties on the right hand sides because I customise things quite a lot, whereas uh, then it doesn't take over the tools that I'm using on my tool chest on the right hand side. Um, the other thing that you can't see at the moment is the navigation bar down the bottom and also the status bar. So the navigation bar will come on when I open a PDF. So I'm just going to open something up now. Uh, so we just give one second. So you see when I open up the document, the navigation bar pops up down the bottom. So in here it controls how the document behaves, how we navigate around it. Um, and also how we can scroll through documents. It also tells us the size of the page and then uh, the scale that's set, if there is a scale set. If there isn't, you should see that uh, I think it says no scale set here. Um, and other thing is the status bar that doesn't come up. So if we go to tools and then toolbars and then status bar, I always recommend to turn this on. So in here, we have all the snap to settings. So snap to content, snap to marker, uh, you can turn a grid on as well, you can snap to grid, and then you have the reuse tool setting here as well, and you have synchronized views. So when things are in split screen, everything when you zoom on one, you zoom on the other. All these toolbars on the right hand side as well can also be moved. Um, you can detach these two, um, or you can drag them up to the top. Um, so it just depends on where you want them. If you have a lot of toolbars open, which some people do, or have a lot of tools that you use regularly. Um, sometimes it's too much to take up the side, so you can put some at the top as well. So once we've customised all of this kind of stuff, so you've turned on the status bar, you've turned off some of these things, uh, let's turn off a few more, um, you've added, let's say, an extra couple of toolbars. Um, so we've added let's say the advanced, advanced text one. Um, obviously you don't want to have to do that every single time um, you open up Bluebeam. So what we have is called profiles. So under review and then profiles, um, we're, I'm in the default review profile at the moment, but what we're going to do is go to manage profiles. We're going to create a new one by going to add. And I'm just going to call this uh, webinar week one. And hit read. So now everything that I've just customised has saved into this profile and also becomes the active profile as well. So we hit OK. And you can see if I go back to review now and then profiles and review, it will switch back to the original one that I had. 
And then if I go back now to webinar week one, it goes back to how I just had it set up. Um, it's really important to remember if you do customize more things after, so let's say we hide a couple of more tabs, we don't need them, to go to review profiles and save your profile. If you don't save it, everything that you've changed won't be saved in there. So the actual PDF and how it performs. So there's a few different modes of how we can have it behave. So on the right hand side here, uh, sorry, the bottom down here on the left, we can make it split vertical. So we can have it open on two different screens. You can have two uh, documents open in there as well. And because we've got the synchronized views on, it zooms on both. You can go to unsplit, you can split horizontally as well. Um, and the next two settings here, um, you've got one full page or scrolling pages. So what it means is when you're in one full page, which is what I mean currently, when I scroll with the mouse wheel, it will zoom in and out. If I go to scrolling pages, if I scroll with the mouse wheel, it will scroll through the pages instead of zoom. So I would usually recommend when you're dealing with drawings to be in one full page so that you can zoom in and out really easily and pan around your document easily. If you're in a document that's got a lot of pages of words, specifications, or just general documents, contracts, whatever, um, go to scrolling pages and then you can scroll through your documents quite easily. The next settings in the navigation bar here basically define how the mouse will behave. So when we're in one full page, I'm just going to go back to a drawing. We're in one full page. So we've got pan mode, we've got select, we've got select text, and then we've got the zoom tool. So in pan mode, if we click and hold with the left click button, you'll pan around the document. If you click and hold with the mouse wheel, you will also pan around the document. If you scroll with the mouse wheel, you will zoom in and out. If you click and hold the right click button, you will draw a selection window. So with the, the uh, pan mode, we just covered the pan, select tool and the zoom tool. The only thing it won't do is select text. So I would recommend keeping in pan mode of pretty much everything and just learning those functions with the mouse, getting used to using them so you're not having to switch modes all the time. And the only thing you need to do is if you're selecting text is to go to the select text mode. Cool, so the last thing I'm gonna show you today is just the file access tab. So there's a million different ways you can open documents in uh, Bluebeam. You can do it through file and then open you can do it just from your Windows Explorer, as you would with most documents, or you can use the File Access tab. So in here, any recent documents that we've used will uh, come up in this list. Um, you can right click and clear the recents if you want to clear them as well. You can also pin documents to here. So if you're working on a particular project um, and you want to be able to access the files really quickly, it's a really good way of doing it. So if I go to File, Access, and then Explorer, then takes me to uh, the, a particular file. Um, I'm just going to go to my desktop, notes, I'm going to go to Bluebeam, and then demo files. So what I've got is a set of documents that I added. So this is a project that I want to use. Um, I want to use all of these files regularly. So what I can do is pin them. So if you hover over one of them, you see the pin on the right hand side. If we click that, go to pin file, and then we're going to do it with all of them. And then if I go back to my recent files, everything that I've just pinned in that folder comes up in the, in the recent, um, under recent files for us, or comes under pinned basically. So that's the file access tab. It's really helpful to open a document from there. All you have to do is click it once and it will open. Um, so I'd recommend if you're working on a particular project to pin all your documents in there so you can open them really easily rather than having to go through all your folders and find them. It saves you a lot of time doing that. Cool, so that's everything for today, guys. So that was interface, navigation, and profiles. Um, we're just going to go to the slides. Um, I just want to ask if anyone's got any questions.
If you have any, just put them in the chat box. And oh, Dom could not see my screen, unfortunately. Sorry, Dom. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, if you want to put them in the chat box now, um, I'll hang around for five minutes or so to answer them. Um, otherwise, if you think of any questions later, feel free to reach out, guys. So Alex at advancedspatial.com.au. Um, keep an eye out uh, for the, the following weeks. We're going to have uh, about 10 weeks of these, um, just short webinars. Um, they'll also be uploaded on our YouTube channel as well. If you haven't seen uh, that, go check it out. Just search Advanced Spatial Technologies on YouTube and you'll see it there. Um, but other than that, guys, if there isn't any questions, um, um, yes, definitely. We'll email out the shortcut to the pages, um, certainly. Any other questions at all, guys? Awesome, that looks like it, guys. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, my name is Alex Butcher, and um, yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or anything else. Um, but yeah, I will uh, post this on YouTube as well for anyone who wants to go back. Um, and yeah, thanks guys, we'll see you next week. <laughs>